two, test, test. Good morning. Good morning, family. How's it going, everybody? Welcome. Come on in. If you'd like to stand on your feet, we're going to start worship. We're all together. <laughs> to be in the house of the Lord. Nothing can separate Even if I ran away Your love never Mistakes. You have no mercies for me every day. Your love never fails. You stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. Your love never fails The chasm is far too wide I never thought I'd reach the other side Your love never fails No You stay the same You stay the same this morning. God, we're here to worship you. Just pray that you would have your way, Holy Spirit, in this place this morning. Here 
Here we go. All throughout my history, your faithfulness has walked beside me. The winter storms made a way for spring, yeah. In every season, from where I'm standing, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life. Come on. All over my life, yeah. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life. happens you are on the throne and Lord it doesn't mean that our days go trouble free and trial free God but we know that you are good and you are on the throne and you've got us in your hand Lord I thank you for that Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fire, time after time. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood.
Hallelujah. So this is my story. And this is my song. I'm praising my risen King and Savior all the day.
Father, it is our honor, it is our privilege to come before you right now. Sometimes I don't know if we fully understand that in your presence there is complete joy and total peace. So we lay down everything that would encumber us from your presence today, invade this space, this time, our hearts. We surrender, we give it all over to you. We thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Wow, so good, so good. Well, uh, for those of you who are visiting, welcome. We're so glad to have you here at Redmond Community Church this morning. If you don't know who I am, I'm going to tell you. Uh, I'm Pastor T. I get the awesome privilege of serving as a senior leader here. Uh, it is a joy to have you with us this morning. Welcome to everybody online. So I'm in charge of announcements today because we have something really special. So they put me at the end of the worship set because I have something really special for us today. So just real quick, a couple of announcements. If you are new, when you came in, you should have got a little bulletin that looks like this. If you open up this bifold page, there is a perforated side. Mine's not perforated good or I'm not folding good. Right? And if you tear that off, if you're visiting today, if you tear that off and fill it in, we'd love to connect with you, get to know you. You can put it in the boxes at the back of the auditorium. That's where offering goes, but you could put that in there, and we'd love to connect with you that way. So if you're interested in meeting with us, we'd love to meet with you. 
And just a few more things on Wednesday. This Wednesday starting, we have a new Bible study. It's called As a Man Thinketh. And it discusses the intersection between psychology and theology. So great, great class. We're going to have a sign up in the, uh, in the lobby after service led by a Really awesome, awesome guy, Mr. Dave Larson. I don't know if anybody, if you don't know Dave, I'm going to put Dave on the spot this morning. Dave, would you stand up so everybody, he, he's got a new hip. Hey, that's Dave. You, you can't miss Dave. Dave is one of the few guys in the church along with Pete that when I hug them, I just nestle in. I just... I just snuggle in when I hug those guys. So uh, Dave's going to be the primary teacher of that class. Also, this Friday at 6 p.m. is the women's tea, and there's still sign-ups in the lobby afterwards. So all ladies are invited. I think it's going to be a big crowd. I may put on a wig <laughs> and crash the party. You think I could pull it off? <laughs> Who remembers Geraldine? Geraldine. Uh, that's what it would be like. It'd be like Geraldine, right? All right. <laughs> Real quick. Um, also, uh, the end of the month, April 28th, we are having baptisms here. If you are interested in being baptized, we'd love to have you join us on the 28th. Out in the lobby at the information center and on the wall behind, there is a little pamphlet that looks like this. It's about baptism. So if you're curious about baptism, you're saying, why should I be baptized? What is it? What's required? This will answer all of your questions, and we would love to have you join us for baptisms. Also, who knows what May 2nd is? Prayer, right? It's the National Day of Prayer. So Redmond Community Church, over the last 14 or so years, 15 years, has been the host church for the National Day of Prayer. So we would love to have you join us. We have tickets available. They are $10. It's interesting because cost has gone up substantially on food. It's costing $17 a plate, but we're allowing you to come for 10. That's cool. It's lots of food. And prayer, as well as being the church of Jesus Christ. So we'd love to have you join us May 2nd. Also, we are updating the website. So we have a new website coming. We also have a new church app that's coming. So we'll be able to stay connected with one another more. You guys will get my face all the time. <laughs> right? So, well, that's announcements. And here is the announcement. I am excited this morning. Um, many of you know Pastor Jim Holm from Crossing Church. Pastor Jim Holm is one of my best friends in the whole entire world. He, he is my guy. I, I'm energized with, when I'm with him. I learn from him. I just love him to pieces. Well, Pastor Jim has a friend that would be considered his best friend. And then he introduced me to his best friend, Pastor Greg Schaub, and his amazing, amazing queen wife, Stacey Schaub. They have been the senior leaders of Gateway Foursquare. When I left for those two weeks in, in March and went and taught, one of the churches that I was at was Gateway Foursquare. Do we have some pictures, Jackson? So this, this, is, one of my, this is one of my guys. This is my fire team, Abby Six, and Pastor Greg, if you, if you don't know who he is, look for the coolest guy in the picture. <laughs> That's Pastor Greg Shaw. And then uh, when we were over, Pastor Greg and I and Nicole and his wife, Stacy, we got to spend some time together. And we've known each other for seven months, but it feels like a lifetime in a good way. You meet somebody and instantly... There's a connection with him, and that's what I have with Pastor Greg Shaw. He is a powerful, powerful man of God, father of five wonderful kids, grown kids, grandpa to 11, right? And he, he and his wife still look like they just stepped off the pages of GQ. They're, they're just, 
Amazing. I love them. Can we welcome this morning, RCC Way, my friend, Pastor Greg Schaub. <laughs> Mm. Redmond Community Church. Let me just look at you. <laughs> you see, Pastor Tom tells me all about you, but when I watch online, all I see is the things that are up here, and I don't really get to see what's the best part of this church. Look at you all. I'm on right side. Looking good. Looking good, back row. I like it. I like it. Like it. Nice job. Nice job. Left side, looking good today. Well, my wife and I are here, and uh, we'll be here all weekend. It was fun to talk to the guys yesterday at the men's breakfast, and this morning as we get into it, I hope that uh, you're okay with a little bit of uh, rambunctious and, uh, and happy, because uh, this is the day. Did you know? This is the day. Now, some of you say, well, this is the day of what? Like, the Masters is on today, yes. <laughs> that, that, and that's a very important day to me. Someone's going to get a green jacket today. This is the day. But the answer comes in Psalm 118 where it says, this is the day that the Lord has made. And when the Lord makes the day, whether it rains all night or whether the sun comes out, we rejoice and we're glad in it. Amen. So just turn to your neighbor and say, this is the day, this is the day. that the Lord has made. So as Pastor Team mentioned, uh, we got to meet uh, last October for Men's Retreat, and then we were part of the Abbey Six uh, out there in Mount Angel. But one of the things in the last seven months that has been very special, and maybe this is how you feel when you're around Pastor T, but um, I wanted to show you a couple pictures because seven months ago, I didn't look like this. But since I have been hanging out <laughs> with Pastor Tom, look at what effect he has had on my life. Right there, baby. I mean, this guy gets results. He, is it, oh, is it not all right to show pictures? Are, you can't do topless in church? This, these are just some of the results of seven months with Pastor T. I tell you, you spend enough time with this guy, you're going to get abs. Truthfully, I barely can button my shirt. I'm still like figuring, I didn't even know if I was going to be able to tuck in today because um, I'm still a work in progress. But um, man, when you hang out with a guy like Pastor Tom, that's how you feel. You feel swole. You feel strong. You feel capable. You feel able. You feel like I can climb a mountain. You feel like it's going to be okay today. Pastor Tom's my friend. And uh, I'm just grateful to, to you and, and to Nicole. And I know you showed the picture of uh, us having dinner together. It's amazing how God can forge friendships so fast. Um, and, and I want to talk about that a little bit today. But I know that behind every good man is a great woman. And uh, could we applaud and give our praise and thanks to <laughs> Queen Nicole. <laughs> amazing lady. And uh, she, she's just something special, and uh, I know you all know that, but uh, we've only gotten to know that over the last couple months, so uh, Nicole, bless you. Thanks for uh, being uh, the first lady of this house. I love it. Well, let me introduce you to my, my wife and, and two of the most important women in my, in my life. Um, one has two legs and one has four legs. Um, <laughs> So this is my wife, Stacy. We've been married. Uh, this will be our 36th year in July, and uh, yeah, she is an amazing lady and uh, in her own respect, and uh, she's, she's an ordained minister and uh, partners with us in Gateway. We've been there for 25 years uh, as the senior pastors, and uh, what I'm holding right there in my arms is our, is our puppy, and uh, it's been a little hard being in Redmond for three, four days without her, but this is Penny, and uh, she goes usually with me everywhere, and so that's my my little girl right there. But uh, we have, uh, I'll just show you because he, he said it just to prove it because you don't believe me that uh, we have five kids, three girls, two boys. They're all grown and got amazing sp spouses. And then this is, uh, this is our crew. This is our tribe. This is the Shab uh, Plus. And uh, so we have 11 grandkids. And uh, 
they're all over the place. We got some in Austria, some in Colorado, and uh, some over in the valley. And our youngest son, Daniel, who is from the Bend area and uh, worked at St. Charles for years, uh, is now in Denver. And uh, they told us at, at Christmas that they are due with their first baby, which will be our 12th. So we're, uh, we're obviously a little stoked by that. And uh, that's pretty, pretty fun. But that's why I got the gray hair. Uh, so, and then my, my dad's in that picture too. So... Uh, what makes Redmond so amazing? What would you answer? What would you say? I mean, is it that you're the hub city? Is it your amazing restaurants? Is it uh, just the, the things that, uh, yay, there we go. I was wanting somebody to say that. Thank you. Tom paid you for that, didn't he? Yeah. Some would say some of the amazing things about this area, and Stacy and I have been traveling over here for years because, as Tom mentioned, Jim and I and Daylene have been friends for 25 years, and uh, they've helped uh, sustain us in ministry as friends do. And we've been to Smith Rock. And uh, any, anybody go to Smith Rock, Rock this weekend? Anybody this, this recently? Not many of you because it's been raining. You don't, you, don't, you don't go, right, when it's raining. Uh, but I have two questions for you about these two particular places. The first question I have for you today uh, is, is what's up with Misery Ridge? What, 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 has anybody done this one lately? Yeah, that one, that one, I, I haven't done that one yet. I was going to do it, but uh, it was too rainy yesterday, so, <laughs> and I was watching the Masters, but, uh, but, but this other one, I just, I snapped a picture, I had some friends, Stacy and I climbed this one yesterday, we got up to, uh, what's it called, monkey something, uh, monkey face, yeah, so we, we got up there yesterday, that was nice. <laughs> Church on the move, that's you. Did you know that? You are a church on the move. You are a church on the move. And do I have a word for you today? We're going to be opening up this amazing book right here. I don't know what version, translation, or situation you got going on, but uh, whether it's a paperback or you got the smart device that glows in the dark, uh, would, you, would you crack open uh, the right side of the book today? That's where we're going to be going. Join me in the New Testament Gospels. You could be, if you want, this is a little bit of a, uh, you get the choice today. You could be in Matthew 9. You could be in Mark 2, or you can be in Luke 5, because in all three of those destinations, you'll find the same story, the same place that we're going to be spending some time today. And I have a, I believe, a word for this community. And how many know that uh, it's important to have a fresh, fresh word? How many need a word today? Hmm. Okay, the four of us, that's good. How many want a word today? How many are hungry for a word today? So one of the places I like to go is Panda Express, and it's just because it's quick. I know it doesn't give me the abs like Tom, and it's illegal food probably, but the thing about Panda Express that I like is that you get at the end of your experience a little cookie, and these are some of the best fortune cookies out there. Now, the thing about these fortune cookies is that Inside, you get a little fortune. And I've obviously just opened that in front of you, so I don't even know what my fortune's gonna be, but let's just take a look. International travel is in your future. Oh, keep, keep, keep that, keep, keep that one. And sometimes we have the mentality to be fortune cookie people. I don't mean just because we like to eat them, but we think that inside is going to be the answers. It's pretty rude to pollute all over a stage for the very first time when you're speaking here. You will be singled out for a promotion. I should just keep going. I mean, these, these, these are amazing. Anybody want a fortune? Would you like a fortune today? There you go. All right, there you go. Nice, nice catch. Nice catch. Nice catch. With all kidding aside, friends, what we're about to open up is better than a fortune cookie. What we're about to open up in the Gospels today will light your path and will change your trajectory. It's maybe that international travel is in your future, and maybe there's a promotion that's available, but those are just hearsay Chinese fortunes. What I want to share and open and crack open today is the living Word of God, which is alive and will cut you and get you right where you need to be gotten. So as we open this up today, we're opening up something pretty special, and it's going to be way sweeter than this cookie. Ma Mark chapter 2 is where we're going to land today. Mark chapter 2, we're going to be in the first 12 verses, and I don't know if you read that many verses here on Sundays, but we're going to, yeah, we're going to try to get through 12, the dirty dozen right here. 
Now, as I set this up for Mark, and maybe you're saying, if it's in three different places, why Mark? Did you know that the Gospels are symbolized with um, uh, a, a person or a, a, an animal, if you will? And, and maybe because you have such great teachers and preachers, you probably already know this, so this is just probably for your review. But Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, each can be symbolized with a particular thing. Matthew can be symbolized as the man. Mark can be symbolized as a lion. Luke can be symbolized as a calf. And John as an eagle. So why Mark today? Because this is a lion word. Because this is going to have some roar to it. This is going to possibly not bite you, but this is going to get you. Because this is a word that has some tenacity in it. This is a word that has some, some vulnerability in it. And why I chose Mark today in reading this, and I'm going to be reading today from the Living Bible, but it's all good, whatever you're opening up today. Mark writes with some urgency. You'll see in different places in Mark, there's these words that he uses that the other gospel writers don't use them. I mean, Mark uses words like, suddenly. (laughs) Which Luke doesn't use those kind of words. John doesn't use those kind of words. Mark uses those kind of words immediately. And so you're kind of like leaning in, like, Mark, what, 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 what suddenly, what immediately, what, what's going to happen? And that's why I like Mark chapter 2 with this particular passage today. And so uh, are you ready for the word to get you? Here comes the boom. Chapter 2 of Mark in the Living Bible today, it was several days later he returned, Jesus, to Capernaum, and the news of his arrival spread. Arrival spread quickly through the city. Now, here's the thing. I've watched Pastor T a little bit online, and I've seen the amazing gift of the order that he is. And uh, so, so today you have a little bit of a different style. And probably 94% of you, you're not going to like it. So just get over yourself, because 6% are going to love this. Because you're like, you're a little energetic, Greg. Like, did you have a double espresso? No. But what gets me excited is the Word of God. Amen. And I'm, I'm pretty thrilled about this because several days later he returned to Capernaum and the news of his arrival spread quickly through the city. Could I stop before we go any further and just tell you, rock star, preacher. I mean, we're talking healer, demon caster. The amazing Jesus is coming home and something's about to happen. Hallelujah. It's going to be special. Because Jesus has something better than the Taylor Swift effect. When she comes into town and everything stops and everything, whatever, Jesus comes into Capernaum and everything's just going to change. You don't believe me? Look at verse 2. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there wasn't room for a single person more, not even outside the door. Where you say, so packed. packed. Yeah, see, that's the way you say it. When I say it like that, you got to try to, (laughs) you got to go a little bit more with it. So packed. You got a good group of singers here, Patty. That was a little audition for the worship team. So packed, so packed, so packed. Oh, that our churches would be so packed. That our churches in Redmond and our churches in the valley. I understand there's about 40 churches here in the Redmond community, and there's still room for more. Anybody know somebody that needs to know Jesus? Oh, that the house would be so packed. Because somebody out there needs to know about the somebody that you sing about in here. So packed. You have to catch that the room was so packed. There was no big aisles. There was no big room and space. The house was so packed. And look what Jesus begins to do. And he preached the word to them. Now, I've read through this in preparation several times, and so maybe I'll just kind of repeat some things just so you get it, because I didn't get it the first few times, but he preached the word to them. He's in a packed house, and he could have done 101 different things, but Jesus decides to preach to them. And now you might not be surprised by that, because Jesus is a preacher. But if you look at the Gospels, oftentimes what people look to Jesus as is the healer, the miracle maker, the one who's going to touch, do, have something happen immediately, suddenly, something with Jesus is going to happen. But it's noticeable to me that Mark will say that Jesus preaches the word to that packed house. 
Now stay with me here because some of you are here today because you're looking for a miracle. And that's good. Some of you are looking for healing. Some of you are looking for a touch divine. Some of you are looking for something, and it might not have been to be preached to. And I don't want to preach at you. I want to preach to you. Because Jesus models for us the importance of the word. That Jesus, who, yes, is a rock star, yes, is a demon caster, yes, is a healer, yes, is the miracle maker, yes, he can do all those things, but there's something important about being grounded in the word of God so that when you come into whatever house, whether it's packed or not, you bring something. And what are you going to bring? And Jesus brings the word. I want to highlight the vital importance of the Holy Scriptures, that we would hold up our book and we would understand that this book illuminates our life. And we can read stories like this in Mark chapter 2, and it can change our lives. You see, Jesus was a preacher, and Jesus was a teacher, and Jesus was a healer, and Jesus was, and we have so many different descriptions, right? But don't miss it in this story that you probably already know where we're going is a miracle story. But in the miracle story, don't miss the fact that Jesus is going to tell somebody. He's going to preach something. He's going to show them something. Well, let's get back into our story in Mark chapter 2 and look at, with me at verse 3. Four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a stretcher. Now, I know this is a smart group, but back in Salem, I have to describe some things sometimes. And paralyzed or paralytic, do you all know, you all know what that means? Okay? That means he can't walk. I mean, he's just, he's down. And so watch this. Watch this. Not, not me. Watch it in the book, in the story. Watch this. this something's going to get really good really quick here. Verse 4. They couldn't get to Jesus through the crowd, so they dug through the clay roof above his head and lowered the sick man on his stretcher right down in front of Jesus. Nicole, they didn't quite get it right there, and I'm concerned about that. <laughs> Verse 4. So. So. <laughs> so. So. Did you see the so in there? So these four guys with their paralytic friend decide to do something about his sickness, do something about his disease, do something about his needs, do something because the house was packed and Jesus was in the house. So they decided, let's do something about it. So, so what? So they get down and they start digging the roof out on the top where they were. Now, I don't know if they asked for a shovel or a pick or whatever. We don't know. In Luke chapter 5, it says that there was tiles that were removed. But these four guys have the audacity, <laughs> the tenacity, the intentionality with a friend who's paralyzed, who can't walk, to be able to do something about it. So much so that not in their house, but in some guy's house, they dig out, not just a little small area, but they dig out this big space in the roof so they can lower down their friend. How many are grateful for good friends like that? Hmm. Did you see where they lowered him down to? The house is packed. So they go up, and in first century homes, you go up kind of a stairwell, if you will, and they have this upper canopy or balcony area. So they have some engineering. Do we have any engineers in the room? No one's going to admit it. Engineers don't admit that kind of stuff. <laughs> but these four friends, one of them had to be an engineer because at the right place, they dig out a hole, and it says that they lowered their paralytic friend right in front of J-E-S-U-S, right in front, lowered down. Do you think while Jesus was teaching the word, that was noisy? <laughs> Do you think while Jesus was going for it, and they interrupted all that, that Jesus cared about that? The guy's lowered down just right in front of Jesus. And it doesn't stop Jesus from what he wants to do, what he wants to accomplish, what he wants to say, what he wants to heal. Because in front of a packed room, the message is about to get live. They let the pallet down. The text does not show us in any of the three gospels that they shouted to Jesus from the rooftop and said something like, hey, Jesus, um, this is our friend. He's paralyzed. Tough diagnosis. Could you take a look at him and could you do something about it, Jesus? No. The friends just had enough audacity to lower him down and trust Jesus to do what Jesus does. Now, there's an 
underlying thing in there because sometimes with our friends and with our neighbors and our family members, we think we got to tell Jesus all about what the situation is, like he's not omnipresent, like he's not all-knowing, like he's not all-powerful, like, okay, so my Aunt Betty, she's got this situation, and so Jesus, can you do And all we got to do sometimes is just lower Aunt Betty down to Jesus and say, Jesus, I trust you with Betty. And stop being so overanalyzing. Just start digging. Just start cutting some stuff back. Just start removing some tiles. Start destroying roofs. Well, all right. Their faith was of the utmost. They did not ask Jesus to do anything. They just lowered him down. They did not beg. Oh, Jesus, if you could just take a minute. I know you're in the middle of your sermon, but could you just take a minute to think about touching him or helping him? No. No. They just lowered their friends, their friend, their paralytic, down. These four good men believed in the power of Jesus Christ. They believed, they believed, they believed, so they acted. And if you don't know the story, your first time to Mark chapter 2, let's stay in it. Verse 5, when Jesus saw how strongly they believed that he would help, Jesus said to the sick man, son, your sins are forgiven. Now, let's don't rush this because Jesus sees something. Now, you're like, duh, Greg, he sees a paralyzed guy being lowered down right in front of him. Yes, of course he sees that. But do you see what he really sees? The four guys up there with the belief, with the faith enough to lower their friend down right in front of him. Come on, friends, what I got to tell you today is that Jesus sees you as a good friend. Jesus sees you as a paralytic. Jesus sees all things. And what's wonderful about this story is that Jesus is about to do something that we think, well, yeah, he's going to physically touch him. He's going to heal him. It's going to be amazing. Wait. Before all that happens, what does he do? He forgives him of his sins. He gives him internal healing before external healing. He gives him a touch from God because Jesus is fully human and fully divine, and he taps into that, and he's the only one that can do this. No one else in that pack room could do what he's about to do. He forgives him of his sins. And then verse 6. But some of the Jewish religious leaders said to themselves, as they sat there, verse 7, what? This is blasphemy. Does he think he is God? For only God can forgive sins. Now Jesus, verse 8, says in the Living Bible, Jesus could read their minds and said to them at once, why does this bother you? You might relate with some of the different characters in this story, and hopefully you're not relating to these guys, but sometimes I could probably relate to some of these guys, is there's some religious leaders that are in the room. And did you notice in the pack room that they're seated? So they got pretty good seats. They're there, and they're watching, and they start, well, Jesus, what's up with you? You can't do that. What are you doing that for? Does he think he's God? And Jesus could read their minds and said to them at once, why does this bother you? Oh, dear religious leaders. Now, before I bash them too hard, let me just say, good job for being in the house, religious leaders. Good. Good on you. Good good job. But boo. (laughs) Boo, you stinky attitude. You're in the presence of the Almighty. You're in a packed house with good seats. You're VIP, and you start criticizing. You start getting all critical about a paralyzed guy who's interrupting the service, and then Jesus forgiving sins before he forgives his legs, and you're like, ah. Don't be a stinky attitude religious leader. Be happy for the hurting. They get to experience Jesus. Verse 9, I, the Messiah, this is Jesus' response, have the authority on earth to forgive sins. But talk is cheap. Anybody could say that. So I'll prove it to you by healing this man. And then turning to the paralyzed man, he commanded, pick up your stretcher and go on home. You are healed. Rock star, preacher, Healer, demon caster, commands the man. Because Jesus had the authority 
to command. How many know that commanders command authority? And Jesus, who has the anointing and the authority, will command something of healing inside and outside for this guy. And it reminds me when I see and hear and read and study passages like this, this wonderful story. It's just a nice story. No, it's a story about Jesus who has such authority that he can touch and heal and help people. And I want to, when I'm around Jesus, the anointed authority commander, want to not be like defensive of it or boo stinky of it or I don't know about it. No, we should be drawn to the man. We should be drawn to the commander, drawn to Jesus who has that ability. Amen. Instead of, well, let me think about whether or not that's really happening there. Hmm. Will you allow Jesus to touch you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, Nick, sometimes people say, but... I'm not really worthy, but, 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 but I don't really deserve his touch on my life, but, but, but I don't, no, Jesus, you don't have time for me. No, don't worry about it, Jesus. All right, Tom, I'm going to give your people some good theology right now. You ready for some good theology, Redman? Let's go. You don't deserve it, but Jesus went to the cross to show you that you deserve it because you are worthy of the touch from the Almighty. Don't think that you're not unworthy. Don't think that you don't deserve it. Don't think that, well, you know, somebody else can maybe have a little touch from Jesus. No, you need a touch from Jesus, get touched by Jesus. He loves you enough that he died for you on a cross. Loves you enough to lay in a grave. Loves you enough to be risen and resurrected. That's how much you Deservely, don't deserve it, deserve it. I mean, you got, you got to let Jesus be Jesus. And stop this little pity party, I'm not worthy, bad self, whatever stuff. All right, I'm not going to go psychology on you. Dave's doing that in the men's Bible study. You can, you, can, you can talk to him. Verse 12, let's finish it. This is it. This is a crossing the finish line. Verse 12, the man jumped up. He took the stretcher, pushed his way through the stunned onlookers. Then how they praised God. We've never seen anything like this before, they all exclaimed. Oh, man, that's like a standing O for Jesus right there. I mean, like, come on, they've never seen anything like that. Okay, Patty, they're not quite getting it, so I got to illustrate this because I would think that if they've never seen anything like this, this man jumps up. It's kind of like, do you remember he's paralyzed? I mean, he's down, okay? He's down. Now, I'm, I'm not making fun of him. I'm just trying to make a point. <laughs> he's down. And he's not comfortable being down. He's in front of a packed house. He's possibly embarrassed. And Jesus says, pick up your stretcher. You're healed. Get out of here. Don't you know that this guy who's had atrophy, ligaments and muscles and stuff that doesn't work down here, he's got to believe himself. He's got to believe as the paralyzed guy who's Jesus is right there in front of him to be able to say, okay. I mean, he's got to figure out, like, how is he going to get out of this? How, what's he going to do? Because how many know when you've had atrophy or your legs are asleep or you stayed on the toilet too long? I mean, like it's, <laughs> you're, you're like just, I, I can't move. I can't, I can't move. I can't do it. I can't do it. Does it say that he stands up? Look at it in your version. Mine says he jumped up from paralyzing all the stuff to then jumping up. <laughs> Jumps up. Hold on a second. That might be Jesus calling in. He, he, we don't want to. Hold on. Check it. If it's Jesus calling, don't make sure to answer. The man jumped up, took the stretcher, pushed his way through the stunned onlookers, then how they praised God. We've never seen anything like this before. Amen. The man believed enough to try. He jumped up. And then now he's up, and he's full packed house, and Jesus is right there. So what's he do? He just takes the stretcher, and he just walks right through the crowd. And he's got his first legs moving. And he's just kind of, all right. <laughs> That guy just healed me back there. But he said to pick up my mat and go. And 
but I want to stay with Jesus, but he said to go, so I just, he just goes, <laughs> and he just leaves this packed house. I mean, well, where am I going to go? I'm like, I've been paralyzed for all my life, and he leaves, and the people in the room and the people in this packed house said, whoa, we've, we've never seen anything like this before. We, we, we've never seen someone. We know that paralyzed guy. We know that he was down. We now know he's up, and he just walked out, so a miracle has just taken place. And they all, ex- they all exclaimed, wow, oh, we've never seen anything like this happen before. Okay, good story. Hallelujah, praise God. Amen. Now, it got me thinking about the guy who owns the house. Let's call the paralyzed guy Joe. Joe rolls out. He's gone. House still packed. But the guy who owns the house, we don't really know who owns the house, but he owns this house that now has a big hole in the roof. Now, let me, let me make something clear. We got any realtors here? Let me see the realtors. Come on, realtors. Thank you. Do you think, realtors, that the value of this guy's house depreciated and went down? Or did the value of this guy's house after that miracle where they never saw that happen before go up? (laughs) Up, up, and away because it'll be for now forever told. Hey, hey, do you remember? That's the house. That's the house. Yeah, there's a little bit of renovation. (laughs) There's some remodel that needs to take place. He had to hire a contractor to fix it himself, but that guy's house value whoosh, went up because Jesus was at that place, because Joe was at that place, and a miracle happened at that place. Friends, don't underestimate when Jesus shows up, he wants to do some miracle things. And he wants to help not depreciate, but appreciate. He wants to help things not go down, but things go up. He wants to help people walk. He wants to help your home values go up. He wants you to be able to experience the goodness of Jesus. That's the place where the miracle took place. But we got to look to the one who knows what he's doing. We got to look to the Messiah in the middle of our messes. We got to look to the forgiver as well as the healer. We got to look to Jesus. Now, if I could pivot this and wrap it up and finish, because I know the Masters is about to start. i got to be in front of the TV in 18 minutes. Four good friends who will bring him to Jesus. Now, quickly, if I could personalize this story, I wish I had more time, but in my life, I've had friends that have helped me in my paralytic moments. I've had some good friends that have helped me in my low moments. I've had some friends that have helped me when I've actually fallen through roofs in Mexico and was hurting. (laughs) I've had some friends that have helped me through some shame and some pain and some hurt and some grief and some tough stuff. I've had some friends that have helped me to be able to keep going. I currently have some friends like Tom and Nicole, like Jim and Daylene, like Aaron, and like others that have helped Stacy and helped me to be able to keep going going. Because sometimes you just don't want to jump up. Sometimes you just want to stay down. And sometimes you don't want to be noticed. And sometimes you just, I want to have my little pity party. Sometimes you're like, don't take me to that packed house. Don't take me to that church. Don't take me to that place where Jesus is at. Don't take me there. I just, I'm having my own little time. Are you a good friend? Hmm. Are you in need of a good friend? So if you're a note taker, let me just write this one down. This is a little bit kind of like roundhouse to your chin, but it's, I I realize this, and and I hold this to be true for myself. If you need a friend, be a friend. Church on the move, this city needs friends. Church on the move, there's a lot of people outside of these walls that don't yet know what you know. That they've never experienced the astonishing, the amazement, and the excitement of what Jesus can do to forgive sins and to heal bodies. Anybody got a friend out there? Somebody? They're like, ah, oh, they need to know Jesus. Then maybe you're the one to help introduce them to Jesus. Maybe you're the one to help lower them down to Jesus. Maybe you're the one to help tell them about Jesus. And you say to yourself, well, that's reserved for Tom and Greg. True or false? Totally false. 
We are to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. We are to be able to share and tell and show. But it is us, all ministers, all capable. You see in the story in Mark chapter 2, there's four friends. We don't know that they're reverends, ordained, ministers, licensed, pastor, whatever. No, they're friends. They're amigos. They're tomodachis. They're friends that are helping a friend in need. So I don't know if you want to be a friend or you need a friend, but I'm telling you, it's important to have friends. Dale Carnegie says this in his book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. You can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. A research study of 309,000 people found a lack of strong relationships and friendships increased the risk of premature death from all causes, all diseases, by 50%. You see the importance of friendship, what, what we're beginning to forge, what we're beginning to have together, and what we can all have together might save your life. Now this is gross, and I don't mean it to be gross, but just to help make the point... If you don't have a good friend, you're more likely to die. And some some researchers would say it would be like smoking 15 cigarettes a day. We got to have friends. We got to have friends light up our lives. We got to have friends help us through life. We got to have friends to be able to help us in those moments. And we got to choose them wisely. And some of you are hearing me today, and some of you are thinking, well, maybe I need to change some friends. Because maybe you're like, Garth, I got friends in low places. (laughs) Where the whiskey drowns drowns in the beer chases. My Blues Away, which is a pretty cool song, but it's (laughs) not the right message, I don't think. (laughs) Like, who are your friends? Like, you can have whiskey friends, that's fine, but like, make sure you got some friends that are helping lift you up and help you up instead of just trying to, well, I better not go there. It's my first time here. I bet it's my first time. I want to be invited back. You're coming back. Coming back. back. You know why? Because I got a friend in me, you. You got a friend in me. (laughs) You got troubles. I've seen them. I got them too. There ain't nothing I wouldn't do for you. We stick together and we see it through. Because you've got a friend in me. Are you that kind of friend with anybody? Some of you that are married probably should be more like that. Some of you with kids should be more like that. Some of you with coworkers and neighbors and friends be more like that. Because Proverbs 18.24 says this, There are friends who destroy each other, but a real friend sticks closer than a brother. So what kind of friend are you? What kind of friend are you? If you're a church on the move, I think you're going to be church that knows how to bring people to Jesus. That's what real friends do. And if you're here today and you don't quite have a friend, then I want to encourage you to be a friend. Or maybe admit that you don't have a friend and you need a friend. Because all of us should have ride or die friends. All of us have got to have people that are just willing to stick it out and be by your side, whatever. Now, I don't, I don't ride a moped or a Vespa or a motorcycle, but I do kind of get the point that there is importance when it comes to friends that you have friends in your life, ride or die. Tom texted me this last week. He says, hey, can I call you at 3 in the morning? I said, no way, you can't. <laughs> you can call me at 7 a.m. Then I thought, well, if Tom is calling at 3 a.m., it's probably a reason. And if he's a ride or die friend, then I want to answer my phone at 3. Who are the people who are going to call? Who are the people who are going to answer? Who are your ride or die friends? And maybe you need to be one of those ride or die friends. So, Patty, would you come? And as we wrap it up today, I want you just to put yourself in the story and then let's apply this. Are you like the religious guys? You're there, you're here, you're watching, you're analyzing, you're looking, you're seeing but you're still a little bit, eh, I don't know. Jesus, I don't, I don't know. Are you like the homeowner? Willing to host a party. Willing to host a packed house. Willing to let your roof get torn up. 
willing to let things get messy so that somebody can meet the Messiah? Are you like the paralytic? Maybe some of you here today is like, yeah, I, I got something. I'm hurting. I need healing. Or maybe you're like one of the four friends. I see the need. I'm going to meet the need. It's going to be inconvenient. I got to deal with how to get a paralytic upstairs through a roof down to Jesus. But I want to be a friend that gets people to Jesus. Come on, church on the move. Let's get our friends to Jesus. As the piano plays beautifully, I wonder if you could catch the notes and catch the lyrics. We sang it earlier. Because if you don't quite have a friend yet, this is the one I want to introduce you to today. The one who wants to save you, heal you, and help you. What a friend we have in Jesus. Hmm. Line goes like this. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Can we find a friend so faithful? Who will all, will all our sorrows share? No, but Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. So with every eye closed and your heads bowed this morning as we wrap it up today, Jesus, thank you for your willingness to forgive and to heal and to help. Thank you for my new friends here at Redmond. May they be tear off the roof kind of friends. May they bring people to your presence. Help us not care so much about how we get people to you the one who can heal, the one who can help. We're believing for healing. We're believing for torn off ceilings. We're believing for roofs that could be opened so that people could be lowered into your presence. Yeah, the good ones, even the bad ones, even the ugly ones. Oh, Lord Jesus, would you use us? Would you make us good friends? While you just sit in the sweetness of this moment, I'm going to ask you here, if anybody is ready today to say yes to the one who can help you, forgive you, heal you, if that's you today, you've never admitted that you are a sinner in need of a Savior, but you want to believe, believe, believe today that he is the answer. If that's you today, just in the safety of this space, you just lift up your head and your eyes and maybe your hand and say, that's me, I, I need Jesus in my life. I need a soul friend. I, I need him to come in. If that's you just taking a moment to just pause right here in this space. If that's you today, and you'd like to invite Jesus to be the Savior, the Messiah, your friend, just lift up your hand. For many of you that do know Jesus, you have friends that don't yet know Jesus, and I want to invite you in this space right here, right now, just to pray for him as loud as a whisper by name. Oh, Jesus, that you would help me be a good friend and bring Joe, bring Bill, bring Karen. Oh, Jesus, that I could bring my kids, my grandkids. Help me, my neighbor, my coworker. Oh, help me be a, a good friend and a bringer. Help me, Jesus. That's you today, and you're willing to stand and say, I, I, I'll be a friend like that. I'll be like the four friends. If that's you today, will you just lift up your hand? Just let me see you today. I'm, I'm willing to be a friend like that. I'm willing to be braver. I'm willing to be bolder. I'm willing to be more courageous. I'm willing to dig back roofs. I'm willing. That's good. Will you all stand to your feet this morning? Thank you for welcoming Stacy and I today, and thank you for welcoming Jesus into your life, because if you need a touch at the cross today, we want to pray with you, stand with you, believe with you, and help you in that journey. But until I get to see you again, may it be well with your soul. Amen. Were we blessed and touched today or what? Man, wow. I'm not only thankful that I have friends that will get me to Jesus, I'm thankful for friends that carry Jesus in their hearts with them wherever they go. So uh, Pastor Greg and Pastor Stacy, thank you so much for being a friend to me. Well, we're gonna pray out and then we're gonna sing out. 
Lord Jesus, we thank you. We come before you. We honor you. We bless you, your name. You are great above all, in all, through all. Thank you for loving us the way that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Grand earth is quaked before Moved by the sound of his voice And seas that are shaken and stirred Can be calmed and broken for my regard
Precious family, have an amazing week. And if you need prayer over by the cross, we've got some people that would love to pray with you. Love you.